Good day, I'm Dave. I'm Jerry. And today we're going to talk about three ways to improve your memory if you were considered elderly. Ooh, uh, no. I like that. <laughs> well, I was going to ask you, Dr. Peter, what would you consider elderly? Well, I think it's a state of mind. It may be, it may be health. Some people I've met are elderly at 58, and then there's others like I had a, a great aunt who was 100 years old and was still uh, volunteering down to old folks home to, quote her, take care of those old people. Go figure. I mean, it's really a state of mind. It depends on the person, but anything they'll say above, say, 70 years old, you begin to really see some, some level of decline. And that's where people begin to not only suffer physical decline, they may be, begin to suffer mental decline. So what, what ideas do you have? You said there's three. What are the there's three? There's three. So the first one is to do or work puzzles. Really? Yeah. Well, that's kind of like my aunt. <laughs> she she would, at 100 years old, she would work a 500-piece puzzle on a big card table in her living room every single week. So I think there's some validity to that. What's the next one? Number two is to do simple math problems and practice them. Wow. That would certainly get your brain to, to function. Absolutely. What's and then mean? number three is maintain active and close contact with friends. Wow. That's so important. Uh, I'll give you a little anecdote. I was a pastor in an old folks home, and I found that those people who thrived there were the ones who first accepted their condition and said, okay, well, this is the way life is, and didn't grouse about being being old. They just accepted this. You know, other people were cussing the idea of, of having to get old. But the people that thrived the most were those who had visitors and maintained a lot of friendships, even with younger people who had come by to see them. And then those who were in severe decline were those poor individuals who uh, didn't make any effort to associate with anybody else and most of the time didn't have anybody come see them and they didn't last long. So there's a lot to that. Uh, I personally am, uh, next year I'll be 70, and I have a number of friends who are 75 or 80 years old, and a lot of younger friends, as you can see, and uh, they keep me energized. But the uh, the older people, I like to go and visit with them, have coffee early in the morning. We've actually started something called the Romeo Club, which, yeah, retired old man eating out. So... Uh, as I say also, we solve all the problems of the world. It's press coverage we like and nobody asks us. So it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of uh, uh, personal interaction. When somebody's sick, we we call to make sure they're okay. And, and there's a lot of uh, loving and caring of the other person in that kind of, uh, of relationship that we cultivate. So that's really important. Now, what about doing puzzles? Do you think that really has anything to do with with uh, improving memory or cognitive skills when you're old? Well, I was curious about that because I remember my grandmother, when she was alive, she'd always do the the those horizontal uh, like crossword. scrabbles in the newspaper. Crossword puzzles. Crossword puzzles. Sure. That's what I was looking for. Scrabble. Good Lord. It's a board game. But yeah, she would always do those, and she'd ask me questions on some that she didn't get, and she lived to about 87, you know? And wow. I well, I, as, as a scientist and naturopath, I find that there's a number of, of things that puzzles will do. It energizes the brain to figure out patterns, and that takes a lot of mental energy to try to figure out patterns. Okay, if you're, if you're looking at a puzzle, and it's a, it's a photograph that's been cut up into a puzzle, you are trying to complete it based on something that you might have seen. Let's say it's a photograph from a hill of some beautiful ranch, a ranch house and horses in a field or whatever. You're going to have a better chance of completing that puzzle if you've already seen something like that in your life. So it's going to cause you to recall information. Uh, it's just not a bunch of dots and colors on on the page, it reminds you of something, and we're always looking for patterns. Humans are always looking for patterns mentally. So this is going to cause the brain to, to go back and look for those stored pictures. 
It's going to make you think about what goes next to what. You're not going to put the head of a horse on on the cow. Uh, it's there's. And I know it's silly, but the, but but the point is, you have something in your brain that says horse and something else that says cow, and that's going to affect this. Now, a person who is totally in dementia may have not even a clue. They might think it's a giraffe. Who knows? I don't know what goes on in their minds. But this pushes your brain to do things. Now, we talk also about math problems. What would that trigger in the brain to, to cause you to have some uh, benefit to your, to your uh, improvement of memory if you're old? Well, from what I understand, the uh, the part of your brain that uses math and logistics is your left hemisphere. So it could be maybe stimulating a, a larger part of your brain, if I'm not mistaken. The logic, logic side. Logic side. Okay, if we don't if we don't follow through on using something, we lose it. That's a that's a truism about the human body, and the brain is no different. If you don't exercise your brain, you're going to lose cognitive function. And it's just going to become fuzzy when you try to think of it. And there are people who could not sit down today and do a math, a simple math problem because they've used the calculator for so long that they just, they have to figure out how to do that. But they couldn't sit down and do a simple division problem. Most, very many young people can't do it. I mean, that's scary as heck, but they can't do it. They have to have their calculator or whatever. Well, use the paper. Well, that forces you to remember a whole lot of rules that apply. You have to you have to do this, you have to bring this down, and you have to add this. I mean, there's a lot of procedures that must be recalled, and the process of recalling something causes you to have to retrieve memory and uh, even though that that's a left brain process, it also requires you to image that in your mind and form an image of what does a math problem look like? What does a division problem or a multiplication problem or subtraction? What does that look like? And then you have to apply the rules. So there's more than you might think, oh, we just do a few little problems. You had to learn some very sophisticated skills in order to do that. So now it's time to recall those skills. And so it's a, it's a use it or lose it situation. And the third is what? Maintain active and close contact with friends. People atrophy. They literally dry up mentally, socially as they get old. And a lot of people will... Uh, is there friends, let's say 85 or 90 year old people, they just crawl into a shell and the world's over. That's a sad state of mind. Uh, why would they do that? Because most of the things that they know that they have lived in their lives are gone. I, I could do the same thing. I, I became a broadcast engineer in, in the uh, late 60s and not a single piece of equipment that I learned and had to work so very hard to learn how it worked exists today. Nothing exists today. I remember a control room that consisted of, of uh, 52 racks of large equipment. These racks were like seven feet tall, 19 inches wide, and about 18 or 19 inches deep, and they were filled with electronics. That entire control room today can be run from a little handheld tablet. The whole thing can be run from this tablet. In 1975, I signed on the largest public broadcasting station in the United States called uh, Channel 9, Channel 18 in Austin, Texas. It was a marvel to behold. And today, all of that is run from something that looks not much more than a laptop. The whole switching systems are run from that. We lost an entire floor of videotape recording systems. We were talking about massive machines that weighed three or 4,000 pounds. There were 19 of them. It's all done. Everything that's there is done with one server. Wow. 
Amazing. One server. Yeah. And it has a couple of uh, 8 to 16 terabyte hard drives sitting there. And you could instantaneously call up those programs that you wanted. When in the past, we had to be able to carry disks this large or, or spools this large with two miles of videotape that was this wide. We had to carry this. If you don't commit as an older person to continuing to learn, continue to, to realize that nothing is constant except change and admit it. Okay, close friends, fine. They die. People die. So what do you do? You keep associating your with yourself with smaller and smaller amounts and pretty soon you have nobody to talk to? No. Hey, Dave. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You can rejuvenate your mind and your life if you associate with younger people because it's, it's something really cool. They energize you. They get you to realize, hey, life's not over until they put the shovel on you, you know, the shovel of dirt. And uh, so I look at this every day. I, I, I feel I've got almost the same amount of energy as David has because he's got me energized. Let's go do this. We got to do this. We do 20 or 30 videos a week. Why? Because he wants to do it. And I say, cool, let's do it. And so my, my old friends are still there, but I've got a whole lot of new, younger friends that I, I will have contact with and have wonderful relationships until the day I die. I'm certainly not going to stop actively maintaining close relationship with people. It's just not going to happen. So if I want to improve my memory, what better way than to form new memories and continuously every day improve on this, this well-being that I get from being around people who are, are exciting and energized. And I'm remembering stuff now that I haven't remembered in a very long time, simply because I'm around people who are not encumbered with, with age yet. And uh, so I think it's all what a frame of mind personally i think it's really important so until next time this is jerry and david we bring these videos to you every single day because these are topics that you have asked about and uh, it's it's important that we meet that that uh request on a timely basis so keep looking for our videos if you like what we do please hit us the like button and we'd love it, because we really work hard. We like you to subscribe to and, and uh, realize that we're here for you. There are literally hundreds of these videos that have been produced and we are uh, excited to do so. So uh, until next time, be well. Be well.